This week, we're going to be talking about multiplication, but specifically when we're multiplying by numbers that end in zero, like 10, 100, or 1,000. Now, I want you to imagine a place value chart. I'm going to represent our first number, 32, on the chart. In 32, there are three tens and two ones. When we multiply 32 by 10, we're making it 10 times bigger, which means that everything on our chart is going to shift to the left. Our tens become one hundreds and our ones become tens. Now, when we go to write our answer from what we've been representing on the chart, we have three hundreds, two tens, which is twenty, and we have nothing left in the one col in the ones column, so we have to add a zero at the end. Thirty two times ten equals three hundred and twenty. When we multiply a number by 100, we can use the exact same thinking, but instead of something becoming 10 times bigger, it's now becoming 100 times bigger. This means that we have to shift everything twice to the left. The three tens now become three thousands, and the three ones now become three hundreds. When we write our representation as a number, we see that there are three thousand and two hundred. This time, there are two empty boxes at the end, which means that we have to add both of those zeros to the end of our final number. 32 times 100 equals 3,200. There's also a different way of breaking down the equation when we're multiplying with numbers ending in zero. If, again, we have the number 32 times 10, we can temporarily ignore the zero. Our equation now becomes 32 times 1, which is much simpler to calculate. Knowing that 32 times 1 equals 32, we can now add the zeros back into our equation and at the end of our product. So 32 times 10 equals 320. The same thing works for 100. If we start with 24 times 100, we can ignore the zeros while we do our calculation. Our equation becomes 24 times 1. We can easily calculate that and know that 24 times 1 equals 24, and then add the zeros back in at the end. Now, it's very important that we add back the same amount of zeros that we took away. So if we took away two zeros at the start, we have to add two zeros at the end. If we're multiplying by a thousand, that means we're taking away three zeros and have to add back three zeros. So 24 times 1,000 equals 24,000. This way of thinking comes in especially handy when we start multiplying with other numbers that end in zero. For example, if we look at three times 50, we can ignore the zero. Our equation then becomes 3 times 5, which is easy peasy since we've been practicing our multiplication tables and know them super well, right? We know that 3 times 5 equals 15, so all we have to do is add our 0 back onto the end of our product. Just like before, we can do the same thing with numbers in the hundreds. We get rid of our two zeros. Our equation then becomes 2 times 6 which we know is 12, and then we just have to add our two zeros back onto the end. Remember to always make sure that you're putting back the same number of zeros that you took away. 